Hey guys, Panda here, and I am just interested in checking out the new Shaman spells that are being added in with Mr. Pandaria, and I'm going to just do it on a panda. Why not? we got a nice little red panda female here. Now randomize. Randomize, randomize. Okay, we'll go with this one with the pretty flower. Name it. Okay. Let's go. Now, you know, I'm only going to be able to see these by checking into the spell book. But, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Ascendant. This is the new spell. We get it at level 87. This is the one that turns you into a elemental. So, the shaman surrenders her physical form to the power of the elements, transforming into a being of raw elemental energy for 15 seconds. And the one that I'm interested in, elemental... While in the form of the Flame Ascendant, Lava Burst has no cooldown. No cooldown, and Chain Lightning is empowered to become a Lava Beam. Now that sounds amazing. Lava Beam. Don't really know what it'll do. Sounds great. Capacitor Totem. Uh, a totem that gathers electrical energy from the surroundings air, surrounding air and then explodes after 5 seconds to stun all enemies within eight yards for five seconds. What? We have a stun. It's like old Fire Nova. Fantastic. And then if we're looking through here in the talent section, this is the new talent screen. As you get to level 15, you can choose one of these three spells. When you get to level 30, one of these three, one of these three, etc., 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 up to 90. We're just going to look through these. The first ones are probably going to be pretty standard, and the cool stuff will be at the bottom. So let's start off. We've got Nature's Guardian. Whenever you go beneath 30% health, your maximum health is boosted and your threat level is reduced. That's a health boost. Every time you get beneath 30%, your maximum health gets increased. That's going to be great in PvP. Stone Bulwark Totem. Summons a Stone Bulwark Totem with 5 health at the feet of the caster. That grants the caster a shield absorbing damage and up to an additional damage every 5 seconds thereafter. Obviously, I don't know what those numbers are actually going to be like. It's going to absorb damage, and then every five seconds after it's cast, it's going to put another shield on you for a lesser damage. So that's that's great. That's survivability right there. And Astral Shift. Seek Haven by shifting partially into the elemental planes, reducing damage taken by 40% for six seconds. Now, this is not like the Wrath of the Lich King Astral Shift, where if you were stunned or feared, you would take 30% less damage. This is actually a cooldown. It's not as cool as it used to be, but 40% less damage for 6 seconds is not bad. It's not bad. It's, uh, it'll be used. Okay, we could take Frozen Power. Your Frost Shark now also roots the target in ice for 5 seconds. So that is borrowing the Frost Shock for Enhancement Shamans as it currently is. Okay, we have Earth Grab Totem, and this is kind of the same as the current Earthbind Totem. However, there is a slight change here, and the change is that if a target has already been rooted once by the Earthbind Totem, the next time it will not root them. So this kind of does kill my tactic of just kiting and kiting and kiting melees around and constantly, constantly slowing them down with Earthbind, rooting them down to the ground. Now they're just going to be slowed by the second and third and fourth Earthbind Totems. So that's probably a good change because that Earthbind Totem was Seriously awesome. Okay, Windwalk Totem. This is a one minute cooldown on this totem. And it lasts for six seconds. And it grants all raid members or party members or obviously are like arena team or people near you in a battleground. Immunity from movement impairing effects. So you're going to not see any Frost Novas there. You know, any slows. I can imagine that Resto Shamans might need to take this for raids. Or at least one Shaman needs to take this for raids. And you can free up the entire raid and get them to move around. Pretty interesting ability. Okay, we have Call of the Element, which is an 8 minute cooldown. Which, to me, seems like a gigantic cooldown. When activated, immediately finishes the cooldown on all totems with a base cooldown shorter than 5 minutes. So that's not going to affect the Fire Elemental Totem or the Earth Elemental, but that will affect, I guess, 
the Stone Bulwark Totem and the Windwalk Totem. So that's, with those two, that's actually pretty nice. Okay, so we've got Totemic Restoration here. And this is basically if you have a totem destroyed or you've replaced them yourself or placed them somewhere else, the cooldown of that totem is going to be cut down. So say you have a grounding totem and you place it and it's not destroyed and you destroy it by recalling or you place a new set of fresh totems, which has got like a Wrath of Air totem or something in it, then you actually gain a cooldown reduction on your grounding totem that you didn't use that wasn't destroyed. So that's pretty sweet. I'm not sure if also that works with the fact that you place the grounding totem and then technically by absorbing a spell it's destroyed. Does that, will that bring the cooldown down? I don't know. Finally, a nice one, Totemic Projection, 10 second cooldown, place your totems where you want them. Oh my god, it's finally come. Finally I'm going to be able to place a full set of totems wherever I want without having to run there. Fantastic change. That's something that I'm interested in taking, to be honest. Okay, we have the new revamped Elemental Mastery for level 60, which is a 30% haste for 20 seconds. No damage boost at all on that one. No instant cast off that also, so not as tasty as it is at the moment. Okay, we've got Ancestral Swiftness next. It's a one minute cooldown, and it passively increases your spell and melee haste by 5%, so that's a nice thing to have on the side. But it also makes your next nature spell cast within 10 seconds an instant cast. So there's your instant cast, you know, big heal for a resto chamois or something. Echo of the Elements here is basically the current mastery, the current elemental overload. When one of your spells causes direct damage or healing, you have a chance to gain Echo of Elements, duplicating that spell's effect. Actually, that's way better than elemental overload because it works for heals and... It says it duplicates the spell's effect rather than mimics the original spell but with less damage. So that's actually really nice. I guess that I'm going to be taking that as Ellie. And it just says one of your spells. It does not say nature spell, fire spell, so that can apply to lava burst, chain lightning, frost shock, earth shock. I guess the possibilities are endless on that one. Upon reaching level 75, you have the following three. We have healing tide totem. It's like a mana tide totem, pulses out a heal every two seconds, healing the five most injured raid members within 40 yards. So it's only going to heal five people, but it will smartly take the people who need it the most and give it to them. So that's a really good panic, cool down, press that, instantly heal five people who are getting absolutely smashed. Okay, an interesting two minute cooldown here, Ancestral Guidance, when you deal direct damage or healing for the next 10 seconds. So you pop the cooldown, and it's a 10 second buff, so 40% of that damage or healing is then transferred into healing and it heals a nearby injured party or raid member. So that's an interesting one, that's a bit of a selfless one. I see that as a healer or maybe an elemental, I don't know, some sort of elemental support. It seems useful, it seems useful and it'll heal people. It seems like a nice thing for an Ellie to take in a 10 man group. You have two healers and an elemental shaman. With that, just popping off heals here and there. So basically this conductivity one works in the healing rain, so I would imagine this is going to be primarily resto. When you're down in the healing rain and there's an enemy in that healing rain, if you cast a heal or a lightning bolt, then every friendly player standing inside your healing rain gets 20% of the initial healing or damage. That's not going to be the most amazing thing, but I guess for fights where there's huge AoE damage pulsing in, you know, crazy amounts of damage, that's going to be a really sweet heal just to get everyone standing in that healing rain and just pump out the heals and just give those passive 20% heals of those actual heals to everyone else. It's going to be cool. Okay, Unleashed Fury. This is a modification to Unleash Elements. Now, I am primarily, of course, interested in the Elemental, but I will read the other ones. And the Elemental one looks amazing. Increases the enemy's target... Increases the enemy target's damage taken from Lightning Bolt and Lava Burst by 25% for 10 seconds. That's going to make... That's going to make me very happy. That just, that just sounds absolutely beautiful. And for Wind Fury, for 8 seconds, your melee auto attacks can trigger Static Shock. Not a big enhancement person, don't really know what, uh, what that's all about. Earth Living for Restos, when you use Unleash Elements on an ally, you are also healed for double the amount of healing done. Frostbound Weapon, you leech heat from the enemy target, gaining 50% movement speed for 4 seconds. 
So that's, uh, god, that's gonna be nice for enhancement chamois. And Rock Biter Weapon, the sort of tanky, tanky one, you take 40% reduced damage from the enemy target for 5 seconds. So I guess if you're popping Rock Biter on and giving that taunt, you're gonna take less damage. So, <laughs> interesting, interesting. I'm not saying that people use Rock Biter too often, but if you are gonna use it, and it's in a situation where you need to use it, say on Ultraxian taunting down Drakes, uh, they're not gonna kill you. They're gonna do less damage, which is great. This level 90 spell, Primal Elementalist, is very exciting. Your Earth and Fire Elementals draw forth powerful Primal Elemental Planes. Uh, basically, they're 50% more powerful, and they get more abilities, and you can control them. They act as pets. Now, anyone who's played a chamois for any decent amount of time knows that it's so frustrating to drop an Earth Elemental or a Fire Elemental, and it goes and attacks something useless, or it goes and stands there in the middle of nowhere, looking out at the sky, and it's so annoying. Being able to actually control the Elementals, and even, like, pop their abilities... That is going to be so good. Oh my god, it's going to be so nice. That's going to be a pretty much game changer for the entire elemental side of things. And the last spell on the list is Elemental Blast, which harnesses and directs the raw power of the element towards an enemy target, dealing damage and increasing the caster's crit, haste, or mastery by 5% for 8 seconds. So I guess the crit, haste, or mastery will be based on which spec you are. And I do remember hearing something about this. It's a 2 second cast and it's a 12 second cooldown. And I believe, yeah, it's a 40 yard range. It's a, like a frontal cone AoE. Or a frontal AoE, at least. And oh my good god, I've just been looking here at the elemental, like, passive buffs. And look at this lava surge! It's the goddamn tier 12 bonus! Your flame shock periodic damage ticks have a chance to reset the cooldown of your lava burst spell and cause your next lava burst spell to be instant. Oh my god, and I also saw a glyph that makes lava burst always crit whether or not flame shock is on the target. So you imagine that, imagine having that, oh, but it reduces the damage by 5%, I think, 5% maybe, maybe more. But if you think about that, everything else here is pretty much the same as you would expect. That just totally threw me off, and that is amazing. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed me talking through these things and are interested by some of these talents. Really, after looking at these, I am drooling. I am absolutely drooling. I really want to get my Shaman over to this server, over to the PTR, beta servers, and test out some of these things. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to take the 90 spells yet, so I'm going to have to avoid Unleashed Fury, Primal Elementalist, and Elemental Blast. But I can play with all of these things and try and build a spec and try them out. And it's going to be a great, great laugh. So I hope to see you then. And until next time, Panda out. Please leave a like and a favorite if you enjoy the video. And I'll see you next time. See ya.